Pro tip. If you buy a bass, don't play it for six hours the first day you get it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm back with a new haircut, a new bass, and a new upload schedule, apparently. That's right, I'm going full Adam Neely. But now it's time to actually start the video, so... <gasps> a polyrhythm! Two weeks ago, I released a song called Tumor, and y'all really seem to like it, so I do want to talk about it a bit. It does springboard off of a personal story of a tumor that I dealt with, and I want to tell you that story shortly, but then I also want to get into the music and the lyrics and the philosophies, because that stuff's really interesting. So let's get into it. Timestamps in the description if you want to skip around to the different parts, but we're going to start with the story of my tumor. So let's take it back to June of 2016. I started feeling twinges of pain in my back. They'd be really short-lived, but really intense. So they'd last for maybe half a second, but it'd be really intense. And it was in my lower left back, and I'd feel these twinges, but it was only one or two a week. So I thought, uh, muscle pull or something like that. But it kept on going throughout the whole summer. So eventually, my parents and I were like, okay, let's see someone. And whenever I talk about going to somewhere, it's always gonna be we went somewhere because I'm a minor throughout this entire story, going everywhere with my parents. So. We went to a chiropractor. The chiropractor saw me a few times, didn't really help at all. Um, he might have helped something else, but he didn't get rid of the twinges. So then we saw my general practice doctor, and he had us go out and do a bunch of stuff. We did x-rays, we did CAT scans, we went to a physical therapist, we went to a back specialist eventually. So now, what are we up to? Like four or five different places that we've gone to? That's a lot of bills. Anyway, the point is we've gone to a lot of places, and... The spine specialist is telling me, all right, we're going to get you a back brace. So I go to a prosthetic place and I get my back brace. I'll show it to you now. So yeah, the thumbnail was not clickbait. This is the brace that I wore for about three months. The first time, we'll get to the second time later, but the first time I wore this for about three months and you can see there are these green fibers that you can see. There's also fibers that are white or gray from this sweatshirt, but the green ones are from my green sweatshirt that you may have seen in other videos of mine. And that was because I would wear an undershirt and then I'd wear the brace on top of that. And then something baggy like a sweatshirt over that. And it was really fun to ask people to punch me in the stomach because that you don't expect to punch something that's PVC and Velcro when you punch a person. So it's pretty fun, especially because they couldn't see. And I had like a martial art friend who, it was a good time because I spent like five minutes trying to convince him to punch me in the stomach because he was like, I don't want to hurt you. And I was like, trust me, you won't. And it was really funny because, you know, I don't think I actually injured him, but he was, he was surprised. It was, it was a good time. It wasn't all fun though. It was really sweaty and kind of uncomfortable to wear when you're sitting down, which is something I did a lot being a student. Uh, so it did have its redeeming qualities, but I, I would have chosen not to have done it, uh, especially knowing that once we took it off, it was just as bad as it was at the beginning, maybe even worse, because we didn't know that I had a tumor in my back. We thought it was just stress fractures, which is pretty reasonable because stress fractures are really common in young white male athletes. And that's what I was, and we thought, okay, so just stress fractures. And we knew that stress fractures were there from the CT scan. What we didn't know was that there was also a tumor known as an osteoid osteoma. Osteoid osteomas are notorious for masquerading as stress fractures, and it's not really known whether the stress fractures normally come first or the osteoid osteoma comes first, because you don't ever see the osteoid osteoma until you've already assessed that there are stress fractures and probably tried to treat the stress fractures as just themselves, because normally they are by themselves. So my case was actually pretty unusual. Now the spine doctor who eventually figured it out after he sent me for an MRI after we realized that didn't work. Okay, we have to figure out what's going on. MRI. So we get the MRI results back and it takes a little bit for him to find it. It turns out he actually gave a guest lecture at a local university and in that lecture he mentioned very specifically this thing that osteoastium was like to do this. Then he came back, looked at my case files and said, oh, that's what's going on here. So. That was kind of interesting, but we eventually figured it out, and then we decided to remove it surgically and do spinal fusion. So we removed one of my vertebrae and then fused the other two together in the hopes that my bone would kind of regrow around it, but we do lose one of the joints there. So then in August of 2017, I had the surgery and then it was a six month recovery after that. And during that recovery was the second time I wore the brace because during that recovery, I needed to keep my spine stable so that the fusion would go well. And it did go well. Everything went just fine. I got through it just fine, as you heard in the song. So that is the year and a half story of my tumor. And now let's talk about the song. And to be honest, the song only springboards off of my tumor. And it really is talking about death. 
I don't want to get too deep into the philosophy here because that's really more of a thing for my other channel Thoughts in the Crossfire, but the general philosophy that I'm talking about in this song is the idea that death is really not something that we should be complacent with. And we hear all the time that like death is a part of life, death is what gives life meaning. Death is what gives life meaning. But this song is essentially disagreeing with that and saying, no, we need to defeat death, but not in a kind of mystical or religious sense, but in a biological sense. There's a lot of research going on that's been going on for the last few decades about curing aging, and we think it might be possible. And we have examples of organisms like naked mole rats or jellyfish that are biologically immortal. And so it's something to consider. And for a number of other reasons, I think that that's something that really should be pursued uh, with great vigor. However, I don't want to get too deep into the philosophy again. I might make another video about it on Thoughts in the Crossfire. And if you want to discuss with me, please, please discuss with me. I love talking about that stuff. But let's get into the music, because that's really what this channel is about. Just one more quick note before we get into the project, there's a great video by CGP Grey called The Fable of the Dragon Tyrant, and it pretty much hits on the same theme as Tumor. I think it's really worth the watch, it's a completely different style, it's not a song, it's it's completely different, but uh, it's, it's worth the watch, so I recommend it, put it in the description. So this is the playlist view, and as you can see, zoomed all the way out, we can barely see the whole thing, there's actually a couple of lines down there, so it pretty much takes up the whole screen when you zoom all the way out. Pretty cool, pretty big project, not the biggest project I've ever made, but I did spend 16 hours, according to this, 16 hours right there, so yeah. I am not going to highlight every element, just the things that are particularly interesting that you might not have seen before, but I'll be live streaming at some point in the next few days, so I might go through it in more detail then. Thing one. The mix. The way I structured the mix here is pretty clever if I do say so myself. I'm not the first person to do it, but it's pretty clever and it's having two submixes, one for the vocal and one for the instrumental. And the reason why this is so powerful is because if I want to, I can act as though I have the instrumental as, you know, a bounced wave file, as if I bought the instrumental from someone else and I'm just mixing my vocal onto it. And that's a pretty streamlined way of mixing the vocal into the instrumental. But I still have the flexibility of changing and mixing anything I want inside of the instrumental because it's actually a submix. So you see all these different channels inside of the instrumental, they're not routed to the master, they're routed to this channel, and this channel's routed to the master, so that's a submix for the instrumental. Same thing with the vocal, and it's just a really flexible, really powerful way of mixing that I think is a little underrated. I have them similarly split up on the playlist here. This is all the vocal stuff. This is all the instrumental stuff, and then there's some master stuff down here as well. Thing 2. Triangular Reverb So the first thing that's kind of interesting that I think you probably haven't seen before is this little guy right here. Let me play it. It's a sound effect that's part of kind of the main beat here, right? Something in the spine. Right? And so what this sound is... Maybe it's delay and reverb, that's kind of what it sounds like, but it's actually only reverb. Fruity Reverb 2 has this knob called Difference, and Fruity Reverb 2 simulates the sound going into a room with some number of walls, and by default, Difference is all the way up so that the room is essentially a circle. It, it's basically approximating a circle, but if you bring it all the way down, it becomes this triangular room, and that makes the echoes that are simulated become much more distinct, so it sounds a little bit more like delay, but it's still reverb, so you kind of get both, but it's a very interesting sound. And that's what that is. I just thought that was really cool. Thing three, reverse system. The next thing I want to look at that's kind of interesting is this reverse system at the beginning. So what it has is some reverse vocals, some forward Foley, and then some reverse Foley, which is just the drenched in reverb and reversed version of this forward Foley. But there's a little bit more to it because what I did is I would export it and then it would be here. And then what I did is this is what it actually is, right? And then I would chop that up and then reverse these, <laughs> reverse the order of these so that it's reversed on one level and then reversed again on a kind of higher level. And then you can see that's what actually is in the final product. That doesn't really make a difference to how it sounds or how it feels, but it's just a little bit more interesting that way. Thing four, vocals. So one of the great things about having this subvix is that I can just mute the instrumental entirely and just have the vocals here. So I want to look at how the vocals were recorded. Something in the spine. 
So what I did is I recorded one main vocal and then I went a little bit farther away from my mic, like two feet away from my mic where the first one was recorded maybe six inches away. And I recorded it two more times and panned those almost completely left, right, and put some other effects on them over here. Something in the spine. Yeah, just, just a few effects uh, on those background ones. And it's probably a little overkill because they're background vocals. You don't really hear them that well, but I wanted to make it sound pretty nice. And it, I think it's a good effect. And I was really experimenting a lot with this. And we'll see that I did a similar thing with the rap vocals. Another interesting part of these vocals is this gender automation, which is formant shifting. It's also called throat length in the, the autotune plugin that's actually called autotune. The autotune plugin that I'm using here is called pitcher. Um, but this is the equivalent of the throat length knob in autotune. Anyway, this has some interesting effects to it. Now there's a cutoff coming up. The formant shifting kind of sounds similar to a bandpass, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. And the real place where you can hear it in action is over here at this transition. So I realized that reverse sweep sound, that actually shouldn't be in the vocal. I think that's just not routed to anything on the mixer. Oops, it sounded okay though. Anyway, that's what form and shifting sounds like. It was a really cool effect and some people liked this transition quite a lot, so hey. <laughs> Thing five, good noise. So then we get the fun part. So I'm not gonna play through the whole thing here, but uh, I do wanna highlight this cymbal loop and white noise thing going on. Right, so I made a cymbal loop and then I had some white noise going on and they're really quiet. I mean, very low level audio right here, but they really help to fill in the space. So if we listen to something like here, for instance, and you listen to that versus this, it's subtle, but it's important, and uh, this was actually recommended to me, putting these things in, was recommended to me by Wangle Line, who you just saw, and you'll see a little bit more in this. The rap was recorded pretty much the same way that the singing was, where I'd do one about six inches away from the mic, and then two more takes a few feet away from the mic, but they're mixed a little bit differently. Introverted, heard it come. They're mixed a little higher, the backgrounds are, and you can see how I'm a little bit more creative with how I have the backgrounds coming in and out on certain notes, like all the rhyming words words have the backgrounds but the rest of them don't here comes at the beating of the drum keeps going till the sun dies greats when the sun dry to raisins so yeah the rap vocal is pretty nice and uh, there were also some good comments about this yes it was black thing six an interesting transition but not this i'm not talking about what i'm doing right now i'm talking about something that's actually in the song so just in case so this transition here is really cool i want to show you what's going on in here we should always improve but we can still be content right so there's even more sounds than at the beginning. We have that whole reverse system, but we also have egg noise. Egg noise, coming soon to a speaker near you. Which, when you listen to it by itself, is maybe a little disgusting sounding, but in context, I think it sounds really cool. We should always improve. And the way that I actually made this was not just simply by crinkling an eggshell. It was a little bit more complicated than that, but I just followed a tutorial by, guess who? Wangle Line. She has a really great channel. I highly suggest checking it out. And one of those videos that she made um, is a tutorial on how to make this really interesting egg sound. So I highly recommend you go look at that. That's how I made that. So I'm not going to explain it here. But uh, the vocal that I have, the words that I'm actually saying here are also kind of interesting. We should always improve, but we can still be content. I had a tumor in my back. Does that give me the right to vent? <laughs> Maybe. So I kind of have this like ad-lib laugh here because that rhyme is kind of cheesy, but you know, the, the meaning's there. But I got through it. Just fine. And humanity will too. Some so, what I'm talking about here is basically the metaphor that is about my tumor and then death at large for humanity, which is basically where the tumor in my back is like death and the fractures is like our rationalizing it or our accepting death. You know, death is inevitable, so we try to convince ourselves that it must be good in some sense, that it must not be bad if it's inevitable, even though that doesn't really follow, but we have to rationalize it somehow to feel better about it. But 
Our rationalizing it, just like the fractures in my back hid the tumor from us, our rationalizing it kind of hides the problem and we don't solve it. So we would have solved my tumor a lot earlier if it hadn't have masqueraded as these fractures. And so that's kind of how the metaphor is working there. But I say humanity will get through it too, just like I got through my issue. Humanity will eventually probably get through it. And it's looking like that might happen pretty soon because we are developing these new technologies and getting a lot of new knowledge about what aging is and how we might be able to prevent it. And then all this stuff happens. You know, we have all these choirs towards the end. I add in a lower octave to the choir. <laughs> where it just sounded like this before, right? Kind of a nice sound to it. And then a few things drop out, and then a few more things drop out, and then we end on this rather sad sounding acapella that refers to how incredibly insignificant to tiny humans and human timescales are in the universe. So, fun stuff. Tumor is on Spotify and iTunes and all those other places if you want to go listen to it more. And of course, I have a bunch of other music there and a bunch of other videos on this channel. So if you like any of this, there's more where that came from and there's going to be more in the future. I have a lot of really cool video ideas coming up. So yeah, if you want to talk about the philosophy involved in Tumor more, uh, you, could, you could just comment on this video or comment on Tumor or you could message me on Discord. Here's my Discord name. And uh, yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. See you next week, probably, because like, I have spring break now, so I should I should be posting next week. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye. Here we go. Introverted, heard it, call me to heard a perfect rhyme scheme. High reach, check it out, much doubt that a resolution comes at the beating of the drum. Keeps going till the sun dies, great from the sun, brighter raisins. But we raising up the bar now. Yeah, we raising up the bar now. Searching wide and far how life is better than it's ever been. 